Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the updated Vim series here on Learn Linux TV. Here we are at the final episode because I feel like I've taught you just about everything you need to know in order to use Vim on a daily basis, but there's a few more things that I think might be of value to you, and those are the things that I'm going to cover in this episode. What we're going to do in particular is take a look at the Vim config file. We're going to add a configuration item to that file. We're going to take a look at how to start on a particular line number. Basically, a number of things that didn't fit in previous episodes we're going to tackle in this episode. So, how about you join me one last time to dive into the world of Vim, and we'll learn some really cool things. So, let's get started. Now, the first thing that I'm going to show you how to do is add line numbers. This could be very useful if you're programming, for example, or even if you're not programming and you're just editing config files, you might be interested in learning which line a specific config item is located on. So line numbers are something that can be helpful for a lot of people. So what I'm going to do is open an existing file. We have a bunch of files here, so I'll just open the updated file, the one that I used to combine things together. It's the largest file, so I'll open that up. And here we have a Vim window. And nothing much is different yet, but what we want to do is add line numbers. So how exactly do we go about doing that? Well, what we want to do is go into command mode, and we could do that by typing colon, just like that, as you probably already know by now. This is the last episode in the series, so I hope you know that by now. But anyway, we're going to enter command mode, and the command that we want to enter in right here is set and then number, and watch what happens when we execute this command. Immediately, we get line numbers in Vim. How cool is that? If I scroll down, you can see all the line numbers on the left-hand side of the screen. But what if you want to take the line numbers away? Well, one method is you can type colon again for command mode and then type set and then no number, which is the opposite of number in this case. And that makes the line numbers go away. So using that trick, you could toggle line numbers on or off anytime you'd like. So I'll just add them back. And there the line numbers are. Again, we see them on the left hand side of the screen. So that could be very useful for config files and programming and things like that. So if that's something that might be beneficial to you, now you know how to go about adding line numbers. However, something interesting happens if I quit out of Vim. Again, colon Q, and then I'll just go back into that file. Now notice when I go back into Vim, the line numbers are now gone. Even though the line numbers were there when I closed Vim, it didn't remember my preference, as soon as I opened it back up again, then what happened is Vim returned to its normal default of not having line numbers being shown here within the window. So one thing you might be wondering is how to make changes persist, and that's something that I'm going to show you how to do right now. So what I'll do is close out of Vim, and I'll clear my screen, and let's see what we could do to configure Vim and make changes persist. Now there's a very special file that we can edit that'll be a file that Vim will notice or pay attention to if it's present. And if it is present with valid changes inside, then that means those changes will take effect. So in our home directory, which is where I am right now, we can create a file and the file will be called .vimrc. If you didn't already know, a period in front of the file name will make it a hidden file, something that I've gone over in other videos on this channel. But the .vimrc file, if it's found within your home directory, what's going to happen is Vim is going to notice it. It's looking for it. Basically, when Vim opens, it's looking at your file system to find out if you do have a .vimrc file. And if it does find it, it's going to attempt to load the values into memory, assuming, of course, you don't have any typos or anything like that. So what I'll do is press Enter. And we have an empty file right here. So what I'm going to do is add the set number command that we've entered into command mode into Vim itself, and I'm going to include that right here. But before I do, I want to include a comment, and in a vimrc file, we could do that by typing a double quote just like that. That's how we notate that the line is going to be a comment. So I'll just add a little bit of information about what this particular change is going to do. And then underneath that, I'll type set and then number, just like that. And that's the same thing that I entered into command mode. 
So what I'm going to do is save this file. So colon wq, and then I'll recall the previous command I used to open up that file, this one right here, and watch what happens. We have line numbers. I didn't have to go in and activate line numbers. Line numbers were activated for me because I included that instruction right there in Vim's config file. By default, you probably won't have a .vimrc file in your home directory, unless maybe your distribution just so happens to include one. I don't think very many of them do, but if that file is present, then Vim is going to notice that, like I mentioned, and then load its config values into memory. Now back in that file, the vimrc file, we only have one instruction here. We have set and then number. That's the only thing that we're doing here. But you can have additional things added to this config file as well. Every line is a comment or perhaps it's an instruction. Either way, if this file exists, it's going to be loaded into memory and you could add additional changes here. And there's a number of changes and configs and tweaks and things that you could find online. There's just a bunch of different things you could do to customize Vim. But I'm not going to go into too much detail about that in this video but I at least wanted to show you where you go if you did want to make changes to Vim's default configuration. Now, another thing we can do when it comes to line numbers that I want to show you guys is you can open up Vim and have it begin at a particular line number. Call the previous file. So let's go back and open the previous file. And at random, I'm going to pick another line number. So let's just randomly choose line number 20. I think that should be good enough. Let's go ahead and close out of this. And I'll recall that command yet again. And right here, in between the file name and Vim itself, I'm going to type a plus symbol, and then the line number, the line that I want to start Vim at. So if this works, then the cursor should begin on line number 20. So let's see if it does. And it does. As we can see, the cursor is there on line number 20. So now you know you can begin your Vim session on a particular line. And you could do that by typing vim, then you type plus along with a line number, and that'll take you right to that line. How cool is that? Now, another thing that I mentioned in a previous video is that you can delete an entire line by pressing dd. So for example, I'll delete this line right here. So I'll type dd and it's gone. But what I didn't tell you is that when you do delete a line like that using dd, it's going to copy that entire line into the paste buffer. So if I add a new line here and then type p for put, it's going to put that line right there where the cursor is. And I could just keep doing that over and over again. As you can see, it's going to continually paste that line every time I type p on the keyboard. But the thing is, I didn't use visual select like we did in a previous video. Instead, all I did was use dd to delete the line. And then after that, all I have to do is type P on the keyboard to paste the line back in. So if you didn't already know that DD deletes a line and also copies that line into your paste buffer, well, now you know. Now, another thing that I went over in a previous video is the concept of buffers. I also showed you how to switch between buffers with colon BP and colon BN or buffer previous and buffer next. Sorry to interrupt myself, but I just wanted to let you know that I really enjoy making this content for you guys. I have a ton of fun. If you enjoy the content that I produce, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. The thing is, producing content like this isn't cheap. So by giving back to the channel, you can help me make even more content for you guys. And to find out more about how you can support Learn Linux TV, what you could do is go to support.learnlinux.tv and there you'll find some of the ways that you can help support the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video. But how do you go about adding a buffer without switching to it? I mean, before, what I showed you guys how to do is type colon to go into command mode, and then E, and then the file name. And when I do that, it takes me right to that file. Anyway, let's delete that buffer with BD to go back to the original one. And let's see how we can add a new buffer or create a new buffer with the contents of an existing file without switching to it immediately. To do that in command mode, what we'll do is we'll type b add. We want to add a buffer, and we want to add a buffer with the text that's contained in the file that we just opened, which was smb.conf. So I'll press enter on that. And it doesn't look like anything happened, but I assure you something did happen. If I use buffer next to go to the next buffer, there's the file. 
So if you didn't already know that you can add a buffer to your existing Vim session without switching to it, you now know that you could do that with the bad command in command mode, along with the file name to do exactly that. Now the next thing that I'm going to show you, actually the last thing that I'm going to show you before I close out this particular video, is how you can activate splits from the very beginning of your Vim session. As you recall, we can open up Vim, and then we could type something like colon, and then we could type split. That splits the window, as we already know. But maybe we want to start Vim with a few different files open, you know, from one command, and have them both open in splits from the very beginning. So what we'll do is pick a couple of files. I'll pick the middle two there, shares.conf and the SMB config file as well. So what we'll do is type vim, just like before, and then we'll give it the option dash o, and then we'll give it the first file name, and then the second file name, and watch what happens. Both files are open from the very beginning. So if you were curious how to open vim with a few different files open at the same time from one command, well, now you know how to do that. We have both of these files open, and we have them open in horizontal splits. But I'm not quite done yet. If we quit out of everything here and we start over and recall the previous command, watch what happens when I change the O to a capital O. And believe it or not, that one change makes a huge difference. Watch what happens. It's the same thing, but with a vertical split. So now you know how to open two files in a vertical split, and you could do that with the dash capital O option, along with dash lowercase o if you wanted a horizontal split instead. Now there's going to be all kinds of additional tricks with Vim. I mean, Vim is a very complex editor. I've only scratched the surface of it in this video, but I definitely hope everything that I've taught you so far has been helpful, and everything that I taught you so far should be everything that you need to know when it comes to using Vim on a regular basis. And with that, episode number six comes to a close, but also this entire series comes to a close. Now, this was just a beginner series. I might do additional videos on Vim in the future. In fact, I'm sure I probably will. So if you are sad that this, you know, series came to a close, don't worry so much about that. I'm always creating content for you guys around Linux and related technologies. So I'm sure I'll circle back to Vim again in the future. In the meantime, though, be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux. And thank you so much for checking out this series. I really appreciate it.